Hi, welcome to the Fit and Healthy Today show. And in the third line of our series on youthful aging, today we're going to be addressing the supplements that you can take for youthful aging. We re first we reviewed through the causes, the diet, the exercise necessary to maintain youthful aging. Now we're going to review through the supplements that have good research, um, not only scientifically, but anecdotally. Um, I know from my own personal usages and from the usages of our customers as well, too. Number one always is going to be a good multiple vitamin, high in B vitamins with chelated minerals that are chemical free. Obviously, this is not going to be something that you're going to buy at a drugstore, at a warehouse, uh, or any convenience store. This needs to be a good quality, made in the USA, multivitamin with these types of um, items. Particularly, you really want to look at the B vitamins and that you've got chelated minerals and that there's no propylene, glycol, aluminum, or those types of things in your multivitamins. 75 years ago, we probably wouldn't be having this discussion because a lot of things would be in your food, but uh, most of the B vitamins, the minerals are no longer there, along with the C. Now, C is necessary for the collagen matrix. It's necessary for your liver to convert cholesterol back into bile, repair of the collagen, immune enhancer, fights fatigue, and really increases your energy levels as well. So you don't repair. So I see a lot of women coming in to me that are in their 30s and 40s, and they've already got 50-year-old skin. They've got collagen breakdown in their skin tissues. They've got cellulite in their legs and their arms. They're prematurely aging. So it's real important, number one and two, those before anything else, good multiple high in Bs, chelated minerals, and an ester C or mineral ascorbate C. Next, we're going to be moving on to what would be very depleted as well in our diet, and that would be the minerals. Now, calcium hydroxyapatate or a citrate and a magnesium citrate are very absorbable forms of calcium magnesium. We need them for our bones, our nervous system, our cellular activity and response. And basically, it can take between 6 to 12 months to build up reserves, particularly of magnesium, within the tissues themselves. Um, when you don't have adequate amounts of calcium magnesium, the body can't not, absolutely cannot regulate the fluctuation in the vascular system as far as blood pressure is concerned. Your bones and your teeth will crumble. And if you get one from the warehouse, it's like a calcium carbonate with no magnesium. That calcium carbonate will build up on the vascular system and literally can lend itself to bone spurs and your heart valves solidifying with mineral deposits around them contributing or causing heart attacks and strokes. It's really important that the docs not send their patients out to get OSCAL or calcium carbonate or oyster shell calcium. We need to have the right kind. I'm a nutritionist. This is very, very important to distinguish between the different types of calciums and magnesiums. Vitamin D. Two to 4,000 IUs per day is standardly recommended until the levels reach between 40 and 50. Now on the little blood work test, it'll tell you 20. That's 20 at the very low end, but to maintain health and vitality, your vitamin D levels should be between 40 and 50. Fish oil uh, that's high in EPA, DHA, at least 2,000 milligrams twice a day. Necessary for bones and joints to keep the blood viscous, to reduce inflammation, and it's extremely anti-Alzheimer's. Once again, please do not purchase from a grocery store or a warehouse. It needs to be free of all contaminants, particularly at this dosage. And if something is not packaged here in the United States, that concerns me gravely because then it is not required by the FDA or does not meet FDA, FDA standards and guidelines. In the United States, 80% of what you say in your supplements has to be in the supplements um, or it's in violation of FDA rules. And if it's pharmaceutical grade, it has to be 100%. I tend to lean more towards pharmaceutical grade uh, fish oils. Um, there's several different companies out there and you can find them in good health food stores. 
Number five on the list. And I've listed these probably in what I consider in the order of importance, at least on this first page. So priority is going to be pretty much everything you see on this first page. Secondary, when I flip it, then those are the things if you really want to add in a few extra years, pain-free years, or if you have family history of um, vascular problems, heart disease, and that type of thing. This is just for basic maintenance because it's not nutritionally in our diets anymore. Probiotics, good bacteria. Now, 70% of the immune system is in the digestive tract. This is your second brain. In addition, the majority of your serotonin, your feel-good hormones, are produced. All your digestion and absorption of nutrients, all is occurring here. And the little probiotic critters that are in your digestive tract are what help you break down your food. So if you want to maintain a good immune system and break down your food, I would add between 10 and 50 billion per day of a broad spectrum probiotic. Once again, from a good health food store, and one that says on it, that it's, um, amount, it guarantees its strains up to the expiration date, the amount of strains that's contained in it. Not something, again, from the drugstore that doesn't have that guarantee written on it. Um, alpha lipoic acid, one of the strongest antioxidants known to man. It's even used for Tylenol poisoning, but it's a strong liver detoxifying agent, but it also can help with nervous system issues, neuropathy, as well as stabilization of blood sugar. Very important strong liver detoxifier in combination with ester C. These I would consider priorities. Secondary, we're gonna shift the page over. Now mind you, I could have gotten much more comprehensive than what I have on these particular pages, but I, I wanted to give you a good basic um, foundation from which to go on. Now, if you know you have Alzheimer's in your family, you know you have a weak liver, you drank a lot when you were um, younger in your younger years, you're going to want to add in some additional amounts of supplements that kind of hopefully can make up for some of the sins of your youth. Um, CoQ10, 500 to 100 milligrams uh, three times a day, excuse me, 50 to 100 milligrams three times a day. It's a very strong uh, antioxidant, it can lower LDL, increases cellular energy, it literally goes in and speeds up the mitochondria so your cells can help uptake nutrients and actually produce the energy that they need to um, produce. It's extremely anti-Alzheimer's and it fights neurological disorders and diseases. It's been well researched for Parkinson's and other types of neurological disorders. In acetylcysteine, four to 500 milligrams sustained release twice a day, converts into glutathione. Now glutathione produced by the liver is the strongest antioxidant known to man. It converts liver toxins, your carcinogens, into inert substances. That means they're harmless. So when you get pesticides and that type of thing, the liver's gonna deal with them and render them inert. It also aids the liver um, repair and binds to heavy metals and removes them out of the body. Now these heavy metals are gathered from fluoride in your toothpaste, from your fruits and vegetables, which also have fluoride and heavy metals, and basically just metals from your amalgam fillings and from all different sources that you're gonna acquire them for your lifetime. Resveratrol, um, man, very strong antioxidant, very well researched antioxidant, it's a component found in red wine. Now, we know that a lot of people say, oh, I'll just drink my, a few glasses of red wine a day. Uh -uh. These are much stronger uh, intense forms, and it actually has been shown to lengthen life um, between two and three years. Green tea, the same type of research, three cups a day or 500 milligrams of a green tea extract, also has been shown to lengthen life in some studies up to five years. So very strong antioxidants. They give you additional amounts of energy without blowing out your adrenal glands with all those monster drinks. Beta-1,3 glucon for the immune system. Now, if you have a compromised immune system, you've fought cancer, you have cancer in your family, or you get sick a lot, the beta-1,3 glucon in combination with the C and N acetylcysteine and probiotics can really build your immune system so that you can fight off whatever um, comes around you. 
including whatever grandkids, whatever your grandkids bring around you in small little viruses. Super green foods, corella, spirulina, increase oxygenation, and once again, binding those heavy metals. Remember those heavy metals are very strong oxidizers. They cause your body basically to rust inside and damage your RNA, DNA, proper replication. They store in the tissues and something like fluoride, for example, can actually calcify uh, uh, your different glands in your body um, and they won't function very well, particularly the um, pineal gland, which is necessary for lots of different uh, functions in the body, particularly for melatonin production, which is necessary for you to be able to sleep. So very important to rid your body of those heavy metals. The greens oxygenate. And I'm, I'm also talking to, as we discussed in the diet, broccoli and spinach, anything that's rich in chlorophyll, alfalfa, is going to help with uh, binding to those heavy metals. DHEA. Now, I've been having a lot of doctors sending women and men in for DHEA supplements between 10 and 50 milligrams, most of which are not saliva testing. I would really like to see some saliva testing done so that uh, me as a nutritionist can say, okay, I think we need about this amount of DHEA. Now, DHEA is a precursor to testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. It's a very youthing thing, and as we grow older from age 35 onward, our DHEA levels tend to be reduced. Um, carnosine. Now, carnosine protects against glycation of the nerves. From all the sodas and blood sugar issues, and particularly if you're diabetics, carnosine literally can pr protect the glycation or the damage that happens around the nerve endings, around the myelin sheaths of the nerve endings. It also has some additional research currently being conducted for Asperger's, and um, that will address it some other time. Maca. Maca out of South America is an herb that can give you energy, supports hormones. It's particularly helpful for people in menopause and andropause, which women are menopause, men are in andropause, and it can help give you a little bit of additional energy and support the hormones. Rishi extract, called the mushroom of immortality in China. And I know I use Rishi to help me breathe a lot better, but it's also for energy. And you can combine that with another mushroom called cordyceps for energy and endurance. And sometimes I get complaints as we grow older that the energy levels drop. You know, I've not noticed that um, having to do with anything with age, definitely with diet and supplementation. But Rishi can definitely help pick you up a little bit. Ginger garlic, man, whether you eat this outright or you take it in supplements, is a phenomenal anti-inflammatory compounds together. And it actually prevents blood clots. So, you know, aspirin, which thins the blood, which does not stop blood clots, but just thins the blood, um, blood, does not light a candle to ginger and garlic for keeping the blood more viscous and flowing better. Um, you know, there's some studies out on aspirin, brand new studies about uh, how unless you're a high risk, aspirin should not be taken because the causes of dying exceeded the causes of benefit in regular healthy people. So additional research is being done on that. IGF-1, growth hormone factor one. There are homeopathic sprays and there are some arginine, citrulline, uh, glutamine combinations, those are amino acids that can increase your youthing growth hormone. And they're homeopathic sprays, it's you spray in your mouth, and they actually do work. You need to have one that has clinicals written on the side of the bottle, there's only um, a few of them that I know of, but can also induce some growth hormone release as well. There are also tonics like acai, goji, mangosteen, all of those superfood types of things I know that Dr. Oz talks a lot about. Um, can be very helpful and very anti-aging and very good for the immune system. And I could call them like the olden days, they were called tonics. They're very helpful. I mean, the list on this could be endless, and I know I take the majority of these supplements um, because my family history is riddled with cancer and heart disease and lots of other things. So depending on what your history is with your family, discussing it with a, um, a natural healthcare professional most of the time, most doctors aren't going to have the knowledge to discuss this. 
Um, so someone who has a, a background in supplements or uh, nutrition could be helpful. Next, we're going to be moving on to the fitness portion of our show. Thank you. Welcome to the fitness portion of our show. And today we're going to be working on a little bit on ab abdominals and inner thighs, which tend to be uh, need a little bit of extra support as we approach summer in our bathing suits. And with this particular motion, all you're going to do is lift your feet up a little off the ground, but you're going to squeeze the pillows or if you've got any yoga blocks, and you're just going to hold it there and hold it tight and hold the stomach in. And actually, you don't have to do too much, just holding that there for a good 30 seconds and releasing and then holding it there for a good 30 seconds but make sure you're squeezing your inner thigh you'll feel all of these muscles intensify and harden uh, next one I want to show you, you can keep the pillows uh, there the same way and what we do is we roll over and once again the pillows are going to stay between the inner thighs and we get into what's called a plank pose and what we do with that and this is actually what's called a forearm plank and what I'm doing is I'm holding my abs real, real tight, but I'm also squeezing the pillows. So I can feel this all up and down my legs, my inner thighs, my back, and my abdominals. And that should firm things up very nice for you. Next, we're going to be moving on to the research portion of our show. Thank you. Welcome to the research portion of our show, and with us today is Ralph Turciano. And Ralph? thank you for the intro. Mm -hmm. Well, you may have already heard already that basically came out of UCLA was a study that said that sugar makes you stupid. <laughs> this study was published in the Journal of Physiology, and this is May 15th edition. What they basically implied was high fructose corn syrup sabotages learning and memory. They found out that eating a high fructose corn syrup in your diet, or high amounts of it in your diet, <laughs> basically ended, inhibited your ability to also remember and learn. And they said the average American right now consumes over more than 40 pounds of high fructose corn syrup a year. We're going to get back to that. It says we're not talking about the naturally occurring fructose in fruits. This is one thing that disappointed me about a lot of the news studies. They tried to implicate high fructose corn syrup being the same as fructose to confuse the reader. No, this is HFCS, high fructose corn corn syrup. Your common sweetener now in a lot of sodas, which no longer use sugar, they use high fructose corn syrup, a lot of your pastries, and a lot of things along those lines. Things we could do without high fructose corn syrup to begin with, not that life was that tough 20 years ago before it inundated all of our foods. All right. They also said basically that what they did is a study after just six weeks. And after six weeks, they noticed that rats that consume just high fructose corn syrup in their diet basically stopped learning. They were slower. They began to forget what they already knew. They had an inability to pick up new information. And they said it just seemed to disrupt the synaptic activity inside the brain itself. And they found out the way it did this is it interfered with insulin in the brain. So insulin lost its power to influence the brain cells. This is just after six weeks. Keep this in mind. They said, quote, because insulin can penetrate the blood-brain barrier, the hormone may signal neurons to trigger reactions that disrupt learning and cause memory loss. They suspect that the high fructose is the culprit. And what it also tends to do, too, is make the rats DHA deficient. They discovered when you add omega-3s, especially DHA, it seems to minimize the damage from high fructose corn syrup, which may appear to be beneficial to a point, but it just halts or minimizes the damage. It doesn't stop it. It says, while insulin appears to disturb memory and learning, our study shows that high fructose corn syrup diets harm the brain as well as the body. Now, what do you mean by the rest of the body? Well, it's been shown that high fructose corn syrup has been shown to regenerate cancer. Remember when we did the study a long time ago in the pancreas, how the high fructose corn syrup fed cancer cells like crazy, way beyond regular table sugar. 
We found out in children it caused the fat cells to mature and divide and create more fat cells. And so if therefore accelerating obesity. We found out that generally it is an anti-nutrient. Now keep in mind, we consume 40 pounds of this per year. Break that down, that works to about two ounces. Now look at this way, as far as the way media perpetuates certain things, especially when it comes to propaganda. Now let's say I take two grams, these are 500 milligram capsules, of nutrients per day. I will have the media crucify me over, taking maybe 5,000 IUs of vitamin D, 800 IUs of vitamin E, and a multivitamin. They'll be focused on this, like a form of just a weird psychotic behavior. However, the one thing the media doesn't seem to focus on, let's say, all right, we look at high fructose corn syrup. We know it's carcinogenic, it causes it obesity, and now it seems to make you stupid. If I was to feed one gram, two tablets, 500 milligrams equal 1,000 milligrams, and this to a child, you may think I'm being abusive to a child because I'm doing something harmful to the children. Completely bypass the media. This is just a corn sugar to them. All right, now remember, the average consumer, man, woman, and child in the United States, consumes this much high fructose corn syrup on a daily basis if I broke it down to a tablet form and just instead of saying it's a liquid or saying it's measuring it by the ounce. This is what you do to your body on a daily basis. This is what you do to the body of your children on a daily basis. This totally goes under the radar of the media. Something to think about. A gram of nutrients, media goes crazy over them. About 112 500 milligram tablet equivalent to high fructose corn syrup, a known carcinogen, causes obesity, and now makes you dumb. It can care less. In a way, planned obsolescence is more about you and your family than actually anything else. All right, now we go to the next thing, which somehow bypassed the media. Now they found a flavonoid, which is common in fruits and vegetables, called rutin. Why is rutin so cool? Well, they say a majority of Americans in the United States will eventually die of a blood clot from the heart to the brain. This was in the Journal of Clinical Investigation. They found out of the 5,000 compounds they screened, something called quercetin 3 rutinicide emerged as an incredibly potent agent, the best of all. Why? Inhibiting blood clots. So rutin proved to be the most poten potentially antithrombotic compound that we ever tested, ever. A particular note, rutin was shown to inhibit both platelet accumulation and fibrin generation during thrombosis formation. Discovery suggests that a single agent can treat and prevent both type of blood clots. No prescription drug does it to this day. Rutin is cheap, it's a dietary supplement, and you can find it in a health food store. Simple, basic. Doctor tries to put you on Coumadin, mention Rutin to him instead. Science-wise supports this far more than it supports those type of blood thinners. It says the drug, they say, quote, unquote, is a safe and inexpensive drug that can reduce concurrent blood clots and save thousands of lives per year. That, to me, is newsworthy. And now we go to endometriosis. Another thing that did not seem to make the news. What? Well, they said first study investigating the possible link between sunscreen ingredients and endometriosis. Why? Because they noticed endometriosis was much higher during the summertime than any other time. And they began to correlate that with sunscreen. And from there, they began to draw a causative argument. They found out that sunscreen is loaded with female sex hormones. And this was in the Journal of Environmental uh, Science and Technology. The chemical, benzophenone, otherwise known as BP. Small amounts of benzophenone can pass through the skin and is absorbed into the blood where they mimic the effects of estrogen. Not the estrogen that you normally used to see in as far as uh, female hormones being prescribed. We're talking like xenoestrogens, pesticides, things along those lines. They found that the higher levels of BP, basically especially one called 240HBP, were associated with an increased risk of endometriosis diagnosis. Women tended to have higher levels of BP during the summer months, and if they lived in sunny California, further suggesting a link with sunscreens. So you get a proponent to endometriosis, 
look at your sunscreen. Maybe something you may want to reconsider doing or finding one clear of benzophenone, BP. And now for Parkinson's patients. An interesting discovery in regards to Parkinson's. While often Parkinson's patients have a problem with muscle control, well, they cause the muscle cells themselves are malfunctioning, like the power plants. Well, this came out of the Journal of Science, the authoritative Journal of Science. In Parkinson's patients, the activity of the mitochondria and transport electrons had been disrupted, resulting in the mitochondria no longer producing sufficient energy for the cells. Well, they did studies in insects and particularly fruit flies. They discovered when the flies were given vitamin K2, once again, vitamin K2 is something you can pick up in a health food store. The energy production in the mitochondria was restored, and the insect's ability to fly improved. The researcher also able to determine that the energy production was restored because the vitamin K2 improved the electron transport into the mitochondria, which is kind of like the powerhouse of the cell. This in turn led to improved energy production. Mm -hmm. Their conclusion was vitamin K2, which is also very cheap, plays a role in energy production of defective mitochondria because defective mitochondria are also found in Parkinson's patients with what's called pink one or Parkinson mutation. Vitamin K2 potentially offers hope for a new treatment for Parkinson's, something you do not need to get prescribed and barely readily available. Now we go to psychiatric medications effect on brain structure. For the longest period of time, they were saying that psychiatric medications do not affect the brain at all. Well, they discovered a few interesting things. The antipsychotics used for the treatment, especially of schizophrenia and psychosis, resulted in what's called cortical gray matter loss in patients. And this was done in the biolo uh, biological psychiatry. They also said the rats received the treatment for just eight weeks, which would be equivalent to about close to five years in human years. Those which are on the antipsychotics lost an average of 6% of cortical gray matter. Moreover, they said, because the mechanism of these drugs remains unknown, further studies are required. Kind of interesting. That means you, the people on antipsychotic medications, are the experiment. They don't know what it does. They don't know what it means. They don't know what it means, I should say. But they want to see how it affects you in the long run as your brain begins to shrink due to the fact that you're on this antipsychotic medication. And, quote, they found that lithium did not. Well, my time is up, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ralph. Very interesting information. Once again, do your research. We appreciate you watching our show. Thank you.